It is July the 1st, 2022, and it's time for another episode of AMA Air. This week, we are sponsored by WarbirdPilots.com. Coming up today, we're going to tell you about how the world is coming to the International Aero Modeling Center, and we've got a very special discount code for you guys uh, for the AMA store. All that and more coming up today on AMA Air. Welcome to AMA Air. My name is Matt Ruddick, and as you can see, uh, our good buddy Lee Ray, he's off on above top secret assignment this week. Yeah, I'm just kidding. He's like on vacation somewhere. But that's okay. He's allowed to have a little vacation. He'll be back with us on the next episode. Uh, but we have got a jam-packed show for you guys here on this uh, Independence Day weekend, at least the start of Independence Day weekend. So uh, I say we jump right into it. Um, this week began the outdoor NATS here at the International Air Modeling Center. The RC Scale Aerobatics competition is going on. Actually, it's wrapping up today. It's been going on all week this week. Uh, I, as long, uh, along with producer Dylan, who's just over there, um, we spent a lot of time out there hanging out with some of those competitors and getting some photos and videos for you guys. So I uh, hope you guys are paying attention to what's been going on out there at Nats News. So modelaircraft.org slash Nats, where you can get all that information, as well as get uh, information on Nats News. Uh, you can get that right there. Speaking of Nats News, uh, we wanted to bring on a very special guest today. Uh, she happens to be the editor of Nats News, as well as uh, one of our staff writers here for Model Aviation and Park Pilot Magazines. Uh, her name is Rachel Hahn. Rachel, thank you so much for joining us today on AMA Air. Hi, Matt. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So uh, we brought you on because we wanted to talk about the Collier Trophy. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But first, you know, I just brought up Nats News. Um, the outdoor Nats has begun. Indoor Nats wrapped up a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm curious, you know, as the editor of Nats News, first of all, for folks that may not be familiar with Nats News, uh, why don't you tell them a little bit about what that is and where they can find it? Okay. Um, Nats News is an online blog. It's about all the activities going on at the Nats. Um, we have scores on there sometimes. We have lots of pictures. That's people's favorite part of it. Uh, we have reports from special reporters that are on the scene. And um, if you go to the Nats website, there's a place where you can sign up to get notifications whenever the blogs are posted so you don't miss any of the action. Absolutely. And getting some of those firsthand accounts from our Nats News authors uh, is really invaluable and in, for folks that want to try to stay up to date with everything happening at the Nats. That is the absolute best way to do it. Uh, again, modelaircraft.org slash Nats. You can subscribe there for Nats News. Make sure you get over there and do that. Um, but I really wanted to bring you on the show today because you went out to, on a very special trip a couple weeks ago to the presentation of the Collier Trophy. Um, Let's start right off the bat. Why don't you tell folks a little bit about what the Collier Trophy is and why it's so important that we uh, we had some representation there. Okay, Matt. Uh, well, the Collier Trophy is basically one of the biggest trophies that you can get in aeronautics. Um, it's been awarded for helicopters, spacecraft. Um, the, the Wright brothers received it, I believe. Um, Neil Armstrong received it. Uh, we have had some other members who have received it in the past. Um, one of them is Bert Rutan for his, some of his spaceship projects. Um, it's basically like the biggest thing that you can you can get as a modeler or as as a, even just in aeronautics in general. Um, the event was really cool. I got to go out and it was in Washington D.C. at the Marriott Marquis in downtown D.C. And there were people there from uh, NASA, from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, um, Aero Environment Inc., which is the company that helped work on the project and design the, air, the helicopter that flew on Mars um, last year. And also there was uh, some of the military people were there. And then um, I actually got to see a replica or a, a smaller edition of uh, Ingenuity there on a table. So that was really cool. Um, so if you don't know, like the background story on this, uh, Matt Keenan is one of our AMA members 
And he reached out to me last year and said, hey, I'm working on this project and it's it's probably going to start flying on Mars soon. But that's, you know, that's not kind of a thing you hear very often from our members. <laughs> it's <laughs> no. kind of kind of unique. And so I looked into it some more and um, he's been a m modeler for a long time. He started out building in, when he was in middle school, um, learned from a mentor uh, from one of his classes and kept going. And then it eventually led to him having a career at Air Environment in California. Um, so he was really excited about the award and it's really cool. My favorite part about it is to see how the hobby can lead to exciting stuff like this. I mean, if you were like, if you were out the modeling field and you said, Hey, I just flew something to Mars. That's not something you hear every day. <laughs> it's very different. Um, and he, he sent me a couple of thoughts about the award. Um, he said that the Collier Trophy to me is a validation of the importance of recognizing the work on cutting edge, small unmanned aircraft, since all prior winners were man carrying a very large unmanned programs. Um, and then he got to, I believe his company got a, a small replica of the trophy itself. Um, the actual trophy is seven feet tall and it weighs about 500 pounds. And at the awards ceremony, I remember the announcer, um, Greg Principato, of the NAA said that um, it was actually bigger than Shaquille O'Neal. So <laughs> if you have an idea of how big Shaquille O'Neal is, this is bigger than him. Um, and it, we decided here at the headquarters building, they probably used some kind of dolly or something to roll that thing in there because that's a <laughs> big sucker. I, I mean, I would hope so. Yeah. I mean, that's not a short guy and that thing is huge and massive. Um, and it stays in the Smithsonian uh, on display there. I didn't actually get a chance to see it on display. Um, this is a, a handout or a, a program from the actual event. Um, unfortunately, Air Environment did not get to go up on the stage to accept the award, but uh, the chief pilot for NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory accepted it, and he mentioned Air Environment. And one thing that they said about Air Environment is that it's been an integral part of this project almost from the beginning. And he said that they really had an A team working on the project, the best people that they could have done. They said they couldn't have done the project without Matt and his coworkers and his team and other teams. Um, and Matt works with other people who are air modelers and grew up in the hobby. Um, he's the only one that's currently an A member, member but yeah, it's, it was a really neat event. It's neat to meet people from Jet NASA. I never thought I'd be able to do that in my life. And to meet Matt in person was just thrilling. It's so exciting. Oh, and it's just such a huge accomplishment for the, for uh, not just Matt for that entire team mm -hmm. uh, that worked on the uh, the Ingenuity helicopter. You know, we've talked about it here on the show. You guys have heard us talk about uh, with Lee and I anyway have talked about the uh, Ingenuity helicopter and the amazing work that it's doing on Mars, far surpassing its uh, intended lifespan. So yeah. uh, I'm looking forward to all the awesome information that it sends back to us. Uh, moving forward into all these additional missions that it's going to be taking and yeah. uh and and a huge congratulations to matt the team at air environment and jpl uh, laboratory uh, such a huge accomplishment for this yeah they did say um the award ceremony was on june um 9th i believe and they said that it was getting ready to take its 29th flight the next day yeah. which is crazy and then they were talking about how it's uh currently winter in mars and so it doesn't get as much daylight to charge the batteries. And right. so they just have to wake, wait for it to kind of wake up every morning and make sure it's still running. They didn't send a battery charger up there with it. I'm a little disappointed. No, no. Uh, they just have to use the solar panels instead. Yep. Well, uh, Rachel, I wanted to point people to a couple of places where they can read a little bit more information uh, on Matt Keenan and, and the story of Ingenuity. Uh, there is a blog post that we have up on the uh, on the AMA blogs at amablog.modelaircraft.org where you can read a little bit about Matt Keenan and his story. But you also did a, uh, a really great interview that was the cover story in the summer tw 2021 Park pilot issue uh, that you guys can go check out at theparkpilot.org slash destination dash mars you can read that article there on our website or you can uh, check out the the print article if you still have a copy of that laying around so um thank you so much rachel for joining us today on the show and telling us a little bit about the call your trophy um it was a truly a, a really cool thing we got to be able to send a few people out there and i'm glad you guys got a chance to go Thank you, Matt. It's been my pleasure. Absolutely. So we move from one big deal to another big deal. As I mentioned in the uh, cold open of the show, we have 
the world literally descending upon Muncie, Indiana, the International Air Modeling Center for the F3D and F3E Pylon World Championships. Uh, now, the IAC just celebrated its 30th anniversary, and what better way to help celebrate that 30th anniversary than to host these world championships. We're talking about 80 competitors, nearly 80 competitors from 12 different countries are going to be here competing in this world competition. It's happening July, the, starting July the 7th. And uh, if you guys want to learn more information, you guys can go to modelaircraft.org slash FAI. We've got a list of competitors there as well as some other information that you guys can check out. So uh, I know I'm excited for this thing to be here, although I'm not going to be here for it. I am a little disappointed. I'm happy for all you, all the rest of the folks here at the, at the uh, AMA headquarters. I'm going to be at another World Games down in Birmingham, Alabama, checking out the World Games and the drone racing competition that they're going to be having down there. So more information about that on the next episode for sure. Um, the other big event we've got coming up over the next month is Air Venture. I'm sure you guys know all about Air Venture up at Oshkosh, Wisconsin, coming up July 25th through the 31st. Uh, if you've not been to Air Venture, I don't know how else to describe it to you other than it is the biggest air show in the world. And that's not an exaggeration. It is literally the biggest air show in the world. Thousands of airplanes show up every single year. And uh, we are going to have a presence there like we have uh, in, in years past. There's going to be a model aviation experience happening. Control line and RC flying is going to be going down at Kid Venture, which is out behind the uh, EAA Museum. Uh, Twilight Flight Fest with 3D RC flying is going to be there as well. Evening flying is going to go uh, be going on behind the museum as well, starting at 6.30 each day. And, of course, our AMA Sim trailer is going to be near the ultralights on the main flight line uh, every single day, so make sure you check that out. If you're going to be there in attendance, you can go to airventure.org for more information on Air Venture. Seriously, if you haven't been there, um, I've only got to go once, and it was... Overwhelming, I guess, is the one word I can. I've, I've always used that word to describe it. It's just overwhelming. There's so many aircraft there, so much to see. Uh, I encourage you to go check it out. It's certainly one of those that needs to be on your bucket list. Well, guys, I wanted to let you know that uh, I, I'm sure you've heard us talk about here on the show, Lee, as well as myself, how warbirds are kind of our favorite airplanes to, to kind of admire and to look at. There's going to be tons of warbirds over at Air Venture. And they're the ones I like to watch fly. We have a, a big warbird event here at the IEC every year that I love going out and watching. Um, but uh, if you guys are like us and you enjoy warbirds yourself, you guys need to head over to warbirdpilots.com. Warbirdpilots.com carries a full line of highly detailed 10-inch, 12-inch, 15-inch, and 22-inch tall World War I, World War II, and modern fighter pilot figures for your scale warbirds and jets. The line of figures covers aircraft and scales from one eighth up to one third scale, and these figures are fully adjustable to any position and are outfitted with the absolute most scale accessories on the market. The figures are incredibly light, designed specifically for model aircraft, and have the ability to be cut and shortened into busts. Go to warbirdpilots.com to learn more today. Again, that's warbirdpilots.com. I want to thank them so much for sponsoring this week's episode of AMA Air. Hey, hey Matt, uh, I got something on your screen for you that you'll like. Uh, they've, uh -oh. got a, they've got a category that says sci-fi pilots. Sci-fi pilots? What? Check this guy out. I hope you guys can hear our producer, Dylan. Uh, yes, please give me an X-Wing fighter pilot. The <laughs> uh, I love the unscripted parts of our show. That is super rad. I need one. I don't have an X-wing to put him in, but it might make me want to build one. That's that's your uh, that's your inspiration. That's right? my inspiration. I got I got to admit. So, after you know a little bit of a lull in any regular flying, I took uh, one of my P-51s out for a flight last week. So UMX, it's a small one. It's small small P-51. Uh, totally crashed it. So. Sad I'm, trombone noise. Sad trombone for sure. Um, I don't have that queued up on the soundboard, sorry. Yeah, I, I just, I'm going to have to take the apprentice back out and kind of get reacclimated. apparently, is what's going to have to happen. 
and uh, hopefully we'll get it fixed and put it back up in the air at some point. I'll keep you guys posted on that, but until then, I want you guys to stick around because we're going to take a short break. Uh, coming up after the break, we've got iFly AMA, so stick around. We'll be right back after this. Said, are you ready? Are you ready for I'm Well, we are back. <laughs> And we are back, and it is time for iFly AMA. Before we get to that, though, I did want to mention uh, Stuke Dave uh, commented. Uh, he said, hooray for Matt Keenan. He's a longtime modeler and a great guy. I completely agree. Thank you for that comment, Dave. Um, and something else I wanted to mention, you just saw the uh, event snapshot for the um, – National Fun Fly we had just this past weekend and uh, the National Fun Fly membership meeting. Um, I just wanted to take a second to uh, give a huge shout out to everybody involved in putting that event together. It was a great event, a great weekend of flying, and uh, we had a really great time hanging out together and, and putting some airplanes in the air and we got some great pictures and stuff and we got uh, all that stuff up on our social media channels, so be sure to go check that out. Um, also wanted to mention, a couple of weeks ago, we had the MultiGP International Open here on site, and uh, also just a blast of a time. Uh, we had more than, I think almost 300 pilots were, were here for that event and put on an incredible show, even through the rain, which we had a lot of, and uh, a little bit of mud to go along with it. Uh, we had a blast out here, so I want to thank all the guys at MultiGP and all the volunteers that helped put that event on as well. I say all of that to get to this, which is that it's time for the iFly AMA Facebook segment of the show. If you guys have not yet joined the iFly AMA Facebook group, head over to facebook.com slash groups slash iFly AMA. Hit that little join button. Make sure that uh, uh, you know, you're not a robot of some... We, we don't need any robots in our group. I'm just saying. Uh, we want human beings like you. So answer those couple of questions and we'll accept you into the community of amazing modelers coming in there to share all their fun videos, how-to tips, stories, you name it. All that stuff is in there. And uh, I, I'm by myself again today, so we're going to give you my favorite iFly AMA story from the past couple of weeks. And this story comes from Steve Neal. And I hope that this name sounds familiar to you because Steve was actually the guest on Jay Smith's Model Aviation Live program a couple of weeks ago, back on uh, June the 15th. And uh, he, Steve is a longtime modeler, lifelong modeler. He also happens to be a special effects artist out in Hollywood, has worked on some stuff like Ghostbusters, Fright Night, a handful of others that you might be aware of. So go check that out over at modelaviation.com slash live. But he put this post up um, and I wanted to share, guys, share it with you guys because it's just proof that it's never too late to get back into the hobby. He said, after nine years of little flying because I didn't have a field and runway in Ventura, California, I found the Camarillo Flying Circus Club and I've been flying there every Sunday like clockwork for three months now. I even started building again. And there's a couple of pictures there with uh, Steve and some of the airplanes that he has been flying out there at the Camarillo Flying Circus Club in Ventura, California. 
So, Steve, thank you for posting that. He's actually posted a few things out there on iFly AMA, uh, getting people kind of acclimated to some of the stuff that he's been doing. And uh, we really appreciate seeing those posts. So, Steve, keep those posts coming. I think that's awesome. Uh, had a great time getting to talk to him a little bit during Jay's show a couple of weeks ago. So, again, if you want to read more or, or hear from his own words a little bit about his backstory, you can go to modelaviation.com slash live to watch Jay's uh, live interview with Steve. He also happens to be the subject of iFly AMA in the July issue of Model Aviation. So if you've gotten your July issue, which you should have be getting, if you haven't gotten it yet, it will be coming in the next few days. Um, so be sure to check that out. It's at the back cover of that issue. So thank you, Steve. Again, guys, if uh, you are not yet a member of the iFly AMA Facebook group, head over to facebook.com slash groups slash iFly AMA, and you might just see the cover photo winner for the month of July. We've got to announce that for you right here, right now. Uh, I need a drum roll. I don't have a drum. Uh, I don't want to bang on this desk because it'll be really loud. But we're just going to tell you who it is. Uh, the cover photo contest winner for the month of July is Chris Simeo. He posted this photo. This is actually a photo he said taken by Vic Wright of uh, Chris's Horizon Hobby Folkwolf 190A. Uh, I thought this picture was beautiful. I love the sunset in the background. Uh, just an incredible image, and I can't wait to see that going up very, very soon here on the iFly AMA Facebook group uh, cover photo. So congratulations to Chris and Vic, quite frankly. Uh, so thank you guys for that submission. Again, facebook.com slash groups slash iFly AMA to join the iFly AMA Facebook group. Can't wait to see you there, so be sure you go do that as soon as possible. After the show. You can wait till after the show. That's all right. That's okay. You can open a new window, right? Multitasking? Yeah, tabs. That's what I'm doing. Tabs. Tabs are great. <laughs> um, if you want a tab, you got to pay for it, buddy. <laughs> Appreciate the Back to the Future reference, uh, Producer Dylan. So uh, we also wanted to announce our July Club of the Month uh, because we have spent all year kind of celebrating the clubs in our in, within our organization, and we've got some really great ones to talk about, and we've got another one that we want to tell you about today, which is the Frontier Flyers. The Frontier Flyers, AMA Charter 4618, is a family-oriented, non-competitive model aircraft club based in Anchorage, Alaska. I think this is the first uh, club of the month from Alaska, if I'm not mistaken. The club currently has 55 members, participates in the AMA Introductory Pilot Program, which allows newer pilots training along with three months of AMA membership to help get started. The club makes use of two outdoor flying sites and also uses an indoor location when the weather takes a turn for the worse. If you guys want to learn more, you can go to their website, FrontierFunFlyers.org, or you can go to ModelAircraft.org slash clubs uh, to get more information on the Frontier Fun Flyers or use our club search to find a club in your area as well. Again, that's ModelAircraft.org slash clubs. So one of the cool things that clubs get to take advantage of is some of our awesome grants that we put out uh, thanks to our AMA Foundation. Um, we wanted to let you guys know that the uh, grants for 2002 have been awarded. That's for our flying side assistant grants and our TAG grants, which is Take Off and Grow. Uh, we've granted out a total of $69,201.91 uh, between the, uh, the Take Off and Grow and the flying side assistance grants. And I uh, wanted to let you guys know if your club is interested in applying for either the flying side assistance grants or the Take Off and Grow grants, which are Seriously, if you're a club and you need to do some field improvements or you want to get some stuff to help out your introductory flying program, this is a great way to get some financial assistance to do that. Uh, just go to modelaircraft.org slash grants. The grants for 2023 will be opening up in August. Uh, so be sure to check out that website uh, as we move closer to August to try to find out a little bit more uh, as that information becomes available. But I would encourage you to do that. It's such a, a great way to take advantage of some financial assistance that I, I think a lot of clubs don't really realize is out there. So that's a place to go. Again, modelaircraft.org slash grants. 
And speaking of our wonderful clubs, Model Aviation Day, National Model Aviation Day is coming up very, very soon. It's coming up this August. Uh, Dylan's going to have to help me out. I think it's August the 15th? 13th. 13th. I was close. Sorry. I didn't write that down on my notes. Uh, August the 13th is National Model Aviation Day. Uh, you guys can head over to modelaviationday.com. Uh, to find a Model Aviation Day event in your area, or if you are a club that is putting on a Model Aviation Day event, you can register your event there as well. Again, modelaviationday.com. And finally, we wanted to let you guys know about a very special discount code you guys get to use all summer long at the AMA store. If you use the discount code KEEPCOOL12, you get 12% off your purchase at the AMA store. You go to shop.modelaircraft.org and that is good through August the 31st. So keep cool 12, get 12% off your order uh, through August 31st. Get all the cool stuff that you want to give your give yourself or your flying buddy. I'm sure they would appreciate a gift from the AMA store. Dylan, you gonna buy something for me from the AMA store? You know, that. What I'm trying to find that hat that you were wearing that's a really cool hat. I'm just saying, I, I, I appreciate gifts of all things. Uh, just make sure it's the right size. Would appreciate it. That's all we got for this episode of AMA Air. Hey, I want to hope you guys, I wish you guys a very happy and safe 4th of July weekend. I hope you guys have a lot of fun. Have some good hot dogs, hamburgers, brats, uh, and fireworks. Because that's what it's all about. And uh, if you guys liked today's episode, we'd appreciate if you throw a like, share, comment, subscribe, all those things down below. And uh, let us know what you thought of today's episode. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. And if you're not yet a member of the AMA, head over to modelaircraft.org slash join and uh, see what all the cool things the AMA can do for you. Um, but with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. We're going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Where'd the show go? She gone.